You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. The humiliation. A narcissist can be humiliated, but it doesn't last for long, because the narcissism rides to the rescue of the narcissist, and will either cause them to deal with the humiliation head-on by bringing about the direct assertion of control, turning to an indirect assertion, or more usually, where the humiliation is wholesale and extensive, causing the narcissist to slink away, jettisoning the threat to control, causing the narcissist to reject the individuals, and seek what they require elsewhere. Indeed, it doesn't necessarily mean that the narcissist will stay away from those who've humiliated them forever. Many people make the mistake of thinking that if they've caused humiliation to a narcissist, that that means the narcissist will never darken their doorstep again. That is not correct. It does mean, all else being equal, that the narcissist is more likely to stay away from hoovering you, but it is not an absolute confirmation that you will never, ever be bothered by the narcissist again. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, there could be other factors which drive a narcissist to hoover, overcoming the impact of humiliation. Secondly, over time, the impact of the humiliation fades away, like a bruise that heals or a cut that is repaired. The humiliation disappears, and the narcissist can reappear, exhibiting to what you, or someone else who perhaps doesn't understand about narcissism, is an enormous amount of brass neck. But the point is, the narcissist is just engaging in the process of compartmentalization, and when the new interaction occurs, the narcissism does not take into account the prior humiliation, it's no longer relevant. Thus, a narcissist can be humiliated, and it, of course, as you'd understand, amounts to a threat to control, but it is actually short-lived. Because rather than stand there and take it, or slink away and sit there going, thinking to themselves, oh my goodness, I've been humiliated, the narcissism doesn't allow that to happen because it serves no purpose. It will either make the narcissist do something to end the humiliation, perhaps by going on the attack, blaming other people, or utilising an indirect assertion of control, as I've mentioned, or the narcissist just retreats and basically puts it behind them, and then focuses on the next thing. For you, if you'd suffered some form of humiliation, it tends to plague you for some time afterwards, troubling you, irritating you, worrying you. But for the narcissist, it has a devastating effect at the point of the humiliation being issued, because of it causes a huge threat to the narcissist's sense of control, but then the narcissism is activated. It does its job often removing the narcissist from the source of the problem and therefore causing the narcissist to focus elsewhere. Unlike you, that remains thinking about what has happened, the narcissist just jettisons it, compartmentalizes it, and focuses on new targets. Of course, if the people who are associated with that humiliation come up on the radar again fairly quickly, the narcissist in such circumstances is moved to recall what happened last time and basically thinks they're horrible people, I'm not bothering with them. Thus, the looming manifestation of threat to control is again dealt with. The fact is that many narcissists will engage in behaviour which might be seen as humiliating but actually isn't. For example, a shift of course, a volt fast, a 180, a U-turn. But narcissists regularly do this because the narcissist is like that weather vane in a storm. It points nearly always at once. Owing to the need of pursuing the prime aims, the narcissist can say A and then in the next moment mean B. They can vote left and then the following day decide that they vote to the right and they always have done and they never did vote to the left. Such is the flexibility and expedience of the narcissism. Accordingly, what often happens is that people look at the behaviour and determine that would be humiliating, but it isn't always necessarily the case, because the narcissist operates with that often blindedness to the behaviours, that sense of entitlement and lack of accountability. GB News reports by Svar Nanan Sen 
Harry's wife and Prince Harry returning to the royal family fold would be a humiliation for the couple, according to a royal commentator. Pausing there, Harry, it would be, albeit if he was doing it on his own, it would be through a sense of blessed relief that the nightmare is largely over for him of getting away from the sustained devaluation that it is experiencing as a consequence of his wife's behaviour. For Harry's wife, she would not like the fact, if she, bizarrely, were to return to the royal family, of the knowing looks and the slightly gloating appearances from those, but she, her narcissism would soon deal with it, and it would cause her to respond in an appropriate way to nullify those threats to control, and then look to seize the initiative once again. Since stepping down from the monarchy, Harry's wife and Harry have launched multiple public attacks on the royal family, including through TV interviews and the Duke of Sussex autobiography, Spare. However, several reports have stated that Harry's wife and Harry are coming under increasing financial pressure to fund their lifestyle as lucrative deals begin to dry up. The couple's bumper deal with Netflix remains intact, but they were recently dropped by Spotify. Royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams told GB News that Harry's wife and Harry performing a U-turn and rejoining the monarchy as working members would be a humiliation for the couple. Fitzwilliams said... This would be one of the most bizarre events in royal history if they did return after all the attacks. Well, it certainly would. It would be a humiliation for Harry's wife and Harry. Pausing there. The likelihood of this happening is extremely low indeed. Why? Well, in order to get the prime aims, Harry's wife doesn't necessarily need to return to the royal family. She can instead disengage from Harry and look elsewhere. And that's more likely to happen then take her back across the ocean into an environment where she will face repeated threats to control. Yes, she will deal with them, but essentially the narcissism will evaluate. Stay here, jettison him, go after fresh blood, or go back there and face repeated threats to control. It's a no-brainer. Fitzwilliams added, the idea that after everything that has happened that Harry's wife and Harry could just walk back in is beyond extraordinary. It comes as a royal author claimed that Harry's wife would have been horrified by Prince Harry reaching out to Prince William and Princess Kate. Tom Bower stated that the Duchess of Sussex will be against any return to the monarchy. Bower told OK Magazine, I don't think he, Harry, can come back. He's caused so much damage to the family and the concern now is that if he does return, he could well damage it further. I think Harry's wife would have been horrified by Harry's suggestion. You can't completely rule it out that something like that could happen, because after all, the entitlement of the narcissist and the rejection of accountability means that it is a possibility, but it is a very slim one indeed. And the greater likelihood is that her narcissism would seek to avoid the humiliation that would be caused by this, albeit short-lived, and instead bring about the disengagement of Harry and therefore cause her to focus on drawing in somebody else, a new victim, a wealthy victim. Remember, she has no sense of loyalty to Harry, and certainly not to the royal family. And therefore, if the choice was, we go back because we need their help, that is more than likely to trigger disengagement, seen as a treacherous act, and therefore the presentation of potential humiliation. Thus her narcissism will fight against it and cause her to get rid of him because he's seen as the problem and free her up then to pursue alternative means to get the prime aims from more succulent morsels. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.